Almost three decades after the 1993 election, Nigeria is badly in need of such strong unity. But to achieve this, peace is required and the foundation of peace has always been knowledge, concept and compromise through dialogue. No country has ever prospered without a solid concept. In the United States, there is the American dream. And in Nigeria, we have the Sabon Gary concept. Although we do not seem to know its value, this concept originally meant to describe areas inhabited by non-indigens in some northern parts of Nigeria, has evolved because the Sabon Garis are now inhabited by both indigens and non-indigens alike, which is a clear reflection of the strong desire of Nigerians to live together. Relying on the principles of an epic democratic struggle to unite the country along with the ideals of the Sabongari concept, the Kudirat Abiola Sabongari Peace Foundation was established to continue the struggle of Kudirat Abiola for a peaceful and unified Nigeria through equity and justice. She was born and raised in Sabongari, Zaria, and from childhood, living in Zaria, she acquired a clear idea of how Nigeria should be, with a technical committee comprising notable personalities experienced in conflict resolution drawn from the academic world. The Kudirat Abiola Sabongari Peace Foundation will help governments resolve conflicts that threaten to tear Nigeria apart. Through its technocrats, it will also provide research and findings that would contribute to the formulation of policies that would address the underlying causes of tension and conflict in a bid to tackle in the medium and long-term actual causes and not just the symptoms of hostilities. As a language and culture expert conversant in the three major languages of Nigeria, Igbo, Yoruba and Hausa, the founder of the foundation, Alhaji Jamiu Abiola, the Shetima Rashid of Bornu since 2001, will build teaching centers to ensure that no Nigerian language becomes obsolete and that Nigerian youths have additional access to information about their history and the contributions of great Nigerians to the development of this country prior to and after the country's independence. The writing background of the founder will go a long way in ensuring that there are various publications covering these topics available for Nigerians unable to attend classes at the foundation. As a translator of over seven international languages, the founder will also ensure that his multilingual skills are used to analyze crucial data that are critical in solving international conflicts cutting across different regions and countries. Gone too far to go back. 
from from here from here, and I would like to thank Alexis Bakora, Alex Andrew, and the Commissioner of Information, and also the Commissioner of Education, and also the representatives of my team. And uh, so, of the room, I am the system of the room for almost 20 years now. So, I consider myself a citizen of Zaria, a citizen of Congo, and also a citizen of Nigeria. I would like to also thank the representative of the Professor Rodolfo and some of the other wonderful people. May God bless you, may God take you back to where you came from safely. Thank you and welcome to this event. And we have Al Haj Ali, our Chief of Army Staff, and one time uh, for our chairman. Wisdom to carry this movement, not just to do. Please once again put your hands together for me. Thank you, Mr. Sabu Eric. I say so because she lived, or the family lived, almost directly opposite our house. I did not know her personally because she was much younger, but uh, her elder brother was my colleague. He's still my colleague, I'm still his daughter. So it is my pleasure to read the history of Kudit. We used to hear about Kudit when we were growing up, but I never met her. Alhaja Kudira, Olainta, Adeyemi, Adiola. Popularly known as Kudira Adiola, was born in Kaduna on the 27th of August 1951. She was raised in Seven Lagos Street, Sabugeri Zaria. She relocated to Lagos in her late teens, where she met and married. Chief Moshu Abiola in 1972 at the age of 21. Alhaja Abiola was his second wife, but by the time of her death, she had become his senior wife, following the fortunate demise of Moshu Abiola's first wife, Alhaja Cynthia Abiola. Alhaja Kudira Abiola gave birth to the highest number of children for her husband, a total of seven children, and their names are as follows: Olale Komba, Hassan, our chairman here today, Jamil, Khalifa, Mariam, Abdo, and Hadi. At the age of 32. She has set up her own group of companies and at a point she became the largest importer of pharmaceuticals into Nigeria. But her life took a dramatic turn when her husband joined the presidential race in 1993. He put her in charge of the female wing of his campaign in northern Nigeria and that was when she became a different person. No longer a teeny businesswoman, she became a full and vocal campaigner. Then after the annulment of her husband's victory, she could be described as a tireless warrior. She demanded his release after he was arrested for declaring himself the president and was instantly regarded as a dreaded hope by the military government of General Sani Abata. In May 1996, a month before her death, she had been detained overnight for allegedly possessing publications critical of the Nigerian military government. It was after her release that she was assassinated on the 4th of June. 1996. She was hit by a bullet and died a few hours later. Her driver, Dauda, who had been recovering from bullet wounds, also died within two months. 
after her death, she joined Nelson Mandela to become the second African after whom a corner was named in the city of New York. Coincidentally, the corner is on 44th Street, corresponding to her age of 44 at the time of her death. In 2019, the Nigerian government also honored her by putting her name in the Women Hall of Fame, where she was given the title of Unsung Matter of Nigeria's Democracy. May the rest of you rest in peace. Thank you. Yes. I said it was Reverend Father Jenu Collins. At St. Ben, it was called St. John's College. I'm waiting. I said, Father, we Muslim students have no place to go. Because St. John's College had a missionary procedure like FDA. Uh, senior boys will give you the meeting of your life. But if you go into any worship place, the mosque or the church, nobody has a room touches you. So in the afternoon, as soon as they start bullying, we we'll say it's time for prayer. We will run to the area with the market as much, and nobody will touch you. They will not touch you. So I told Father what is, I said, this is too much. Then he called me behind the St. John's church, between that and the assembly hall. He said, my boy, we need you for a month. I said, yes, brother, it will do. We went to late, late, just by Shin Sambo, late for LAP, and late Alaji Hassan Rafida, the Commissioner for Education. And I think we collected a, a total of about 130 naira or so. Uh, or LAP bread, gave us blocks, and so on. When I was in LU a few years later, I heard on the radio, all the opening the mosque in Southeast East, it was established when this guy was there at the corner and I was very proud. So I joined among my friends that today is one of the foremost Isana mosques in Kaduna. The condition I get from people praying there is enough for me. I don't need to put anything else. You know sometimes when they do that even one so that I went from past, you would say, uh, that many people will pass one day for everyone in the camp, and that's all. <laughs> so, community leaders, therefore, in my opinion, are God, and let me repeat, are organic and can be instruments for ensuring sustainable understanding, tolerance, and cooperation. And of course, if such will be implemented and replicated, all over the country, slowly, patiently, they achieve. It's a cheap alternative, it doesn't cost much. Just some discussion in the evening, a ceremonies, a gathering, a services, a religious services, and then we spread the word slowly, slowly, you will uh, we take over. And I think peace, harmony, understanding, and social cohesion will result from here. I thank you so very much for this. Please do make this table, please. Let's keep crafting for four months in the AC. In the past,
the Vanna Center for Al Quran at the Alta, the representative of the area of Zaria, our closest, area of Senso. Senso is Zaria and Ten. Zaria is the area of Al Quran. Zaria. And all other protocols duly are respected in the Well, as a nation, Nigeria came into being in 1914. Prior to that, we live on our own. The amalgamation came in by combining the two sides of the river Niger, compressed into one nation. And that does not mean that prior to the coming of the Europeans, Nigerians do not relate or move around the country without aid or hindrance. The Ukrainian professor that was talking, he says a lot, and he wants to portray the Kanuris as non entities. But let me tell you, the gentleman of Lagos is a Kanuri person. That is Isali Eko. <laughs> and if you go to Ishei in Oyo State, when Sheikh Usman al Khori, Usman al Khori, gave his facts to the Fali new areas, Sheikh Ali was the same charge of the Lord in Paris. As he was coming in from Sokoto, moving towards Ilori, he reached a town called Ishei in Oyo, and he had to call to prayers. And he ordered that the Shuan call the Imam or the leader of that mosque. When his emissary came, the Imam said, We are not going. It is actually a stranger, a good guest. He should have come in. And as a Muslim, he should have even come by hearing the call to prayers. That's how you can do the class. <laughs> he stayed in Ishei for 17 good years, tortured by the same community. The language of Arabic, Quran, the Surah Fiqh, to him, and everything. Because, he knew. because at that time, he only itself is populated by Muslims. That's why the declining jihad has so many colors. Um, that is by the way. Let's come to the topic of that. Yes. The next Tibetan Kyo Abiola, I like the Kashimao Oloa Le Abiola. In Abiola, he lived in Sabo. He's neither, he's either not, not in Lantoro, not in Totoro, not in Kitoku, not in Kolobore, not in Kao, not in Kibaba, not in Kibara, not in Kobejewo. He lived in Sabo. That's why he's out. So that tells you that our unity in diversity is a drop to serve you. The order is now on us for us to coach our young ones that do not know history. And whoever removes history from the school curriculum, he has done a lot of damage to this country than anything else. So, Ghana and the CQH MCMC won the majority of seats in Lagos and in the South in particular, not ours as you do. That tells you what you need to post in Nigeria. From my own state, Alaji Ibrahim Imam, he was sent out to Borno because he had a conflict between the NPC and the NATO. He was invited by Joseph Parker in January to come and contest. The first mayor of Orita is the House of Amitra Imam. I want to come to Zambia here now. 
the Sardos area is an amalgam of all tribes in Nigeria. Go to Kano Sardos But one of the most distinctive features is that for us in Borno, we don't have Sardos. All of us we mingle and live together. There is no Sabo in Borno, no Sabo in Borno. The Igbo one is the next door neighbor to the Sabo person. The Igbo one is the next door neighbor to the Sabo person. The Blanny ones, we are together. The Blanny ones are together. And if it is the Zaria one that is talking, as the Sabo person, I have a stage in Zaria. Because the leaders of Zaria consists of the Malawa, the Fulani, and the Kadoris. So I have a stake here. And if you go to Kasina, the famous Baya Jita. Baya Jita is the Hausa word meaning Baya Jita. He doesn't understand before. He's a Kadori person that kills the snake. But they are letting the story to Bata. The things they are talking about is not the parties, but the near is the economy. So my brothers and sisters, I think we have come at the top of it. One of the major problems that Nigeria is facing today, that is dislocation in the system. But this current government is trying its best to build all the lost infrastructures within the country so that people will have a sense of belonging. For instance, the Southern Niger Bridge has been on the drawing board for both those ways. So by February next year, that Southern Niger Bridge is going to be commissioned by Mr. President in You see, we have forgotten about very low energy. The Lagos Department for Justice and the Commission, the Kaduna Abuja has been on for quite some time now. The one from uh, Ajahuta to Delta, to the Wari, that's Delta, that's so big. So you understand? So most of the problem that we have now is the problem basic necessities of life are not provided. We do not have problem in Nigeria before because Nigeria has what is called Nigeria Airways. We do not have problem before in Nigeria because we have what Nigeria calls the Nigeria Post and Telecommunications where your landlines are working. Up to, up to the late ages, we do not have power problem. You see, by the time in 2000, when we were supposed to be talking about 20 or and above megawatts of electricity generation, we are talking about 1,800 megawatts at the end of the year 2000. That was the still writing data. So what we need in Nigeria is, we that have seen the little good part of Nigeria, should try as much as possible to educate those of us who do not travel out. Uh, and I went to the former governor of Kimose. He has a foundation called the Rogers Foundation that has a population of over 10,000 people. Those schools are located in Sokoto, in Jos, Zaria, and Khan. It's an evil man. Simply because there is one errant evil ranting, it does not qualify all the evils. It is not wrong. We are in a democracy. Minority will have their own say. But the majority will always have their way. But under a precise and fear atmospheric environment. People are thinking about restructuring. But most of the people that talk about restructuring, that is the missing thing, they don't talk about how are we going to restructure ourselves. Do we do it with the southern Sudanese and the main Sudan East, wherein a government, an independence was given to them, from independent till dead, it has become the worst, the poorest, the most uninhabitable, the most dangerous part of the world. In Nigeria, even among us, we used to have a lot of problems. All of us are alive when the crisis between people, um, 
but the grass are always surviving. You know. So let us try as much as possible to live peacefully among ourselves. <laughs> there are a lot of reasons, you know, people that like, people tell you Norway, Denmark, you know, Iceland, they are supposed to be one country before they are on their own and they are doing well. But if you go to Norway, Iceland, Denmark, you don't have Hausa, Ibo, Yoruba, Isekiri, Ibibio, Anan, Ishan, you know. Uh, you don't have uh, Urobo, you don't have Pane, you don't have Kanuri, you don't have Mahurkura, you don't have Mandra, you know, you don't have Idoma, you don't have it. Yeah, you don't have, no, this, you don't have Plani, Plani is there everywhere. <laughs> so you see, so you should also know that when Alias Day was created, Alias Day was created out of Yimosi. Am I right? 24 hours notice was given to those from each of the states to come back to that state. This did not happen when Singapore was ceded from Malaysia. Actually, Singapore did not secede. It was the Malaysian that refused to recognize Singapore as part of Malaysia as at that time. And Liu Kuyong organized himself from the world poorest path to become world greatest country. It was the first time I did why in an operation would be conducted in between two hospitals from different regions was first done in Singapore. The Malaysia that you are talking about borrowed farm kettles from Nigeria. Today, they are making use of these palm canals not only to produce palm oil that we use, Joro Rice or Joro and what do you call it? Uh, 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 whatever, you know. Uh, so they don't do that. They use it to fuel even their engines. They do all kinds of cosmetics and in pharmaceuticals. The Anampo in Anambra, where you see these 14, 14 and packers that are there doing, they started at the same time with Brazil, where in you enter the various wars. This uh, is Zenwa, is you know, Yang Shangro, whatever, whatever, whatever. So if you break this country into two, you don't even need those luxurious forces. You can't build that luxurious forces that they're looking for passport to enter somewhere. It's not going to be easy. In Brazil now, then the first industry cooperation of Nigeria. When the United Nations Development Program came up with the concept of million powers, Nigeria was one of the emerging powers at, at that time. Remember when you were in Sesame Street, those of you that have reached the age of 18. Indians are coming here begging to teach. They, are, they do everything humanly possible to do. Why, why is India now? India is a space giant. India is a computer giant. And if you say the world's most greatest industries and businesses, the leaders are almost all of them are India. India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, uh, Timor, and all, they, 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 were, they were one country. They went their ways. But when they went their ways now, in Pakistan, you only have the passport. In Bangladesh, you have the Bengali. It is only in Afghanistan that you have the Avaras and the Palestinian stars. But in Nigeria, you say you are going home. In my own home state, I have more than 25 different tribes. This nobody listens to one another. Nobody understands the word. Okay. Even in the East, where they are monolithic, the original evil is seen as a house I Tell anybody. They still have a to do what they want to do. Am I wrong? So, based on caste. So I think this country has gone a long way to an extent that we don't need to turn, look back and reduce ourselves to nothing. What would you do with that? All of us would come together. Sit down, discuss, 
and look at the way forward. Every part of this country has the resources that can turn the fortune of this country round the better. If you don't have natural resources, you have human resources. Am I right? And then the factor in every development is the population. China was nowhere, even in the 80s, I'm talking about China, that is everywhere like Pacheco now. They are nowhere. They converted their human resources into material resources. So also the Japanese. There is no mineral in Japan. Recently, the G7 had a meeting in London and they were saying that they had to come back to Africa and check what China is saying. After all, uh, the Belgian would say a way for a nice combo. The British would say uh, Nigeria, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Liberia, you know, uh, Zambia, Gambia in the southern part of Africa. The Portuguese would then play to Angola, the Mozambique, and all this. So, why? Because of the resources. Then what is wrong with us for us to provide those resources for our purpose? If we were able to have progressive leadership that can turn the fortune of our countries and nations around better, we wouldn't have been discussing climate issue, which is a non-nutrical uh, you know, uh, problem. It is never a problem anywhere in the world. It is only a problem because we were so polarized that the only thing we go back with, one is what we two my people. They say what year is four months prayer. And money is not bought for. All of us are born rich. Because we get the same way. God created us from the same soul, divided us into nations. Try. That's the first of the word of prayer. He said, I did this for nothing else but for you to know and appreciate each other. But he said, the most greatest among you all is the one that fears me most. He didn't say the Arabs are the best or the Jew are the best. So I think as a Nigerian, we have to wear our making card. Sit down. Let us educate those of us that have never traveled out. The elderly people of Zion will never think along the line of someone in Anambra or Imo that has never traveled even out of his local government. You are thinking about it is never going to be the same. It is not going to school that much as But for you to see the world and appreciate what the world is. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can't stop. The 
the residents of the area of Gaza, the residents of the ship of Arlo, who also happen to be because I'll leave that to the last session. <laughs> My distinguished colleague, Mr. Commissioner of Information from the State, members of the high table here, distinguished invited guests, members of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa If I have not come to this occasion, I would have missed a lot. I thank God that uh, even after yesterday, even in Malina Salamu Diyar Rufai, wanted to be here this time. But again, this came up cropping off and gave up finally to say that uh, um, who is going to present me in the area? And you you my know one thing you take two of us, myself and the Commissioner of Finance, who also happens to be a friend to Brother Jani. But because of the Isawangari election, he has to leave. I'm also supposed to be there. Because part of me is Isawangari, part of me is uh, somewhere else. But I think this is important. I will tell you later. <laughs> Brother Daniel, Sheikh Daniel, Sheikh Mubayel, share with you at the heart of your statement. I must commend you sincerely for this effort. I am carried away indeed by your thoughts and your direction for this foundation. I will uh, want to start by giving a catalysis regards and a good issue to this uh, effort that connect you and uh, assuring you that the uh, Justice Government will partner with you in delivering all that you have planned under this foundation. <laughs> but I to also inform you that because of uh, the request of the Justice Government have a very peaceful environment, the Justice Government established what we call the Justice Peace Commission. We we'll have a commission that is discussing with communities, uh, leaders of different tribes and ethnic groups, to see how we can go back to do this when we live together. I want to assure you that we will back with Excellency uh, the future plan of this foundation so that we can work together and bring back most of the issues the professor raised in his debut. Uh, we tell that leadership was starting from the grassroots. Leadership was starting from the grassroots. And we must appreciate the fact that every human being, every citizen of this country has a right to see wherever he wants to stay. And he had asked me to convey in this meeting that as far as the governor is concerned and the government of Kalunasi is concerned, every resident of Kalunasi has the right to every resource of community wherever you live in community. I don't need to emphasize that. Look at the cabinet of my Nasser Ahmad Yadukai. You, you don't need to tell anybody. Mulwa Adiki, who speaks on behalf of the Kabinese government, was also born and raised in Salvon Galilaria, is a Yoruba man. Mary uh, Adiri is from Ondo State. She is the special advisor. Uh, program monitoring and evaluation. Uh, there is a little bit, a new woman. He is our chief information officer, member of the city council, and also he is the person who advised government on ICT. Fawcett, the people is a Yoruba woman, and a member of the city council, she is the commissioner of housing and urban development. Um, Mr. Dr. Omano, who is from the middle bed, I don't know precisely either Delta or, or, or uh, either Delta or or Edo. No, no, it's from the middle bed. I mean, either from Delta or from Delta is South South. South South, yes, from South South. Either from South South and from South South. I don't know that's from Edo or from Delta. Um, I, I, I want to just say that if you look at the composition of the state development council of the 
we have people representing all segments of the society. For those who think Nigeria will bring, you just ask the person, bring you from where? And where are we going to stop? My professor who supervised me in my last program was saying that, uh, look, even if we break, by the time we go back to the south, south and south, we will have a problem. So south south will break, south is also break. In the north here, I don't know how many groups are going to break into. I don't know. And imagine somebody who is born and bred in Zaria, for example, have stayed 20, 30 years in Zaria. If you ask him to go back to where he comes from, where would he start? Somebody born in Sahabon, maybe in Biden or Lagos or any of these states, coming back to the North here, once he comes in, he says, send the door away already. Nobody look at him as another house person. Let us rise, raise our voices, please, and talk to our youth that don't know what war is all about, for them to understand what war is, so that we can stop this nonsense. Take myself as an example, after all my studies here in this part of the country, I did my secondary school here in Coppella College area. But I gave my next program after College of Health Sciences was in Ibadan. So if I go to Ibadan, even if you are from Ono State now, I will teach you, take you from Ibadan, from Bodija, I will take you to Bere, Mako, Chile, all that. There. No. When I left there, I was in Lagos. I school in Lagos, but where I live is in Kapoto, for local government. From there to my place of studies, I will take you there and set you up. You will know where you are coming from. From there, I now move. I did my master's in Bauchi, but my second master was in Imo State. Owey. It's Owey Hapa Line. My third master's was in Okomojo, that is the Akutala University. I was there for another master's program, is it in Hausa Line? My PhD is from Ilori. I mean, let us look at how we move around because we think we're home, we don't know what we want to do. I beg our leaders, I beg all those who know the difference between the right hand and the left hand to speak to our youth, to understand that Nigeria has gone beyond breaking. If you break, we are only going to suffer, we must come back and live together. The students, ladies and gentlemen, that are here, I cherish a lot of views and issues raised by professor, particularly issues of how we can integrate ourselves. People that live in southern Nigeria, for example, from different walks of life, I will just I will give an example. One day I was moving around the schools, I went to one of the schools here, just uh, Secondary school, call something. I happened to meet him for the first time in my life. I told him, if you see, I would testify that I am meeting you, gentlemen, for the first time in my life. But throughout my life, since 1976, when I was buying textbooks, I wouldn't do for that bookshop. When I am sending somebody to buy books for me in the library, I would ask him to go to that bookshop. Am I buying those books because I want to get rich for Kuala? I want to satisfy myself because I want to get quality. I'm looking for the first time, just one year ago. If you ask Paula to go back to where is he from? Where will he start from? Where will he start from? I am still at the Let us talk to our people from wherever they are. If you are from here, talk to your people that are in home or in Ilori, where, where. Tell them that where you are here is your home. And I want to assume, you might have learned how many other questions I should tell you boldly that nobody should threaten any individual about his ethnicity, religion, creed, whatever, as long as he lives in the community. You all have rights to any other person. And that's what we cherish, that's what we are protecting, and that's what we do. For us, there are leaders that ask want to become local champions for unnecessarily. They come to the public and say one thing and go back to their community and say something different. This is very dangerous to us. It's extremely dangerous. And we need to understand that for Nigeria to achieve the peak of development, my brother has mentioned in Malaysia and whatever countries, 
you look at all those ethnicity issues and look at the nation as one country. It's critical for us to do that. Brother, uh, the brother that set up his the remembrance of his mother, who was here with you, the past history that we had, my first time in my life having to meet the late MQ Aguila was in this hall. When he came to give his contribution, just a small organization in, in Congo campus invited him. Account, students in accounting department. He came and donated 25,000 naira there. <laughs> my second time of meeting him was when he came back to Zaria to give his contribution when we were doing the second Kuba Nibrish. And I remember this word then, I am ready to come back and do it for the third of a new I mean, even during the election, look at how the votes came from all parts of the country. If you want to be like him, behave like him. Yes. Love people like him. Don't become a tribalized person. Become a person who become a nationalist who love everybody. But we are watching. We are carefully reading things. We carefully read what people tell their followers in the mosque, their followers in the church, their followers in the houses, and what they say publicly. We will compare the two. Some want to become local champions and go and agitate and push people to go into the street and kill others that are not their own brothers and sisters. But when they come to the national programs, they look like saints. They look like saints. They want to speak. For them to be accepted everywhere, we will follow speeches of people, even when they go back to their villages, what do they say their community is here, communities? I want to add all of us, we are all leaders in our different ramifications. Let us behave like leaders. Let us love one another. Let us echo all the issues related to ethnicity and tribal differences. We are one. I don't know what profess religion, Islam and Christianity. I think we should try as much as possible to respect what we are worshipping so that Nigeria can remain one in peace. I will conclude by the story. This is my brother, Commissioner of Information from Borono State, having enjoyed the breath of oxygen around the area and the area, decided to raise issues that uh, we can only discuss but I'll give you a general one. It's a takeaway when you're going. You see, that was uh, this journey people are undertaking. In the journey, there are full ideas, there are canoes. When it came to time of prayer, certainly you know what will happen. The canoe man will want to be the boss to pray. So go and pray for us. So go ahead and lead us in prayer. The canoe man went to the prayers and said, prayer. Oh, you are not there. <laughs> And the Kanul man led the prayer of the Akbar up to the time when he said, Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> then the Kanul man turned and looked at the worshippers that followed him and said, Yakuga Salah. <laughs> and then the people are just saying, Allah is saying, Chai, Yachika. So you get a Tachika. So you are Tachika. Then the Kanul man said, The mother of Yadulaba.
the organizers, various dignitaries here present, various traditional rulers, people of Zaria, my town, ladies and gentlemen, and gentlemen of the press. On behalf of the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I, I am delighted to be here representing you on this great occasion. Uh, it is acknowledged by us that here and now there is nothing else that is desired in Nigeria other than peace. Because without peace, no nation can achieve anything. Uh, we need peace in our families, we need peace in our communities, we need peace in our towns, we need peace among each other, we need peace among all the tribes and different nationalities in Nigeria. Uh, this is a great occasion, especially coming at a time when Nigeria is going through a lot of things, a lot of issues. We have issue of insecurity, we have issue of agitation by various groups, and we have issues of budgetary and other things. So this, this discussion here is coming at the right time, so that at least we can rob minds and share ideas on how we can live in harmony with one another. You know what? For peace to reign in any society, people must actively be involved in trying to establish that peace. My friend and uh, brother from Borno was talking about how it used to be. And the professor also in his lecture gave a very important uh, narrative on how life was back then. And I, I think this is one area where we can all go back and see that those things that some of us that are over 50 years witness, we can try as much as possible to try and get it revived in our children. I can remember when I was uh, a secondary school student, I probably knew all the names of the governors in Nigeria. I knew about many different tribes. I used to read newspaper even in secondary school. I used to learn about other parts of the world. But a couple of years back, we were told that even the teaching of history in secondary school was prohibited. And now it has brought about a crop of young people. All they are interested in is instant gratification through social media. Somebody has something in Instagram, you put it, whether it's true or not true, and then, you know, it becomes the only thing that they know. If you ask an average graduate now to tell you who is, or who was, or to make or choose as an example, a lot of them will not be able to explain to you successfully who or choose was or who was Ahmad Bento, or who was Ahmad Kasifa Afalewa, or who was Brigadia Zakari Nehmanari. They had no idea. And there is no nation in this world that will really move to a next level and establish a decent society without knowing where they were from. An average American child doesn't know anything about any other part of the world. When he just certainly know about the Civil War, about the British uh, American War, about the Civil Rights Movement, about all the turmoils and trials and tribulations that the United States went through. So I urge those of us that are older to invite in our children that spirit of trying to understand what Nigeria is all about. And again, those who are discussing restructure, my question always to them is that what are you trying to restructure? If you ask about 10, 20 different experiences, what is the idea of restructure? You find
why that they have no idea what they are talking about. Some of them have not even studied the 1999 constitution. The 1999 constitution is almost 70 to 80 percent 1979 constitution. And it's not true that the constitution was shown to us by the military. There is no military man in the drafting of the Nigerian constitution, whether the one of 1978 to 1979 or the one in 1979. In 1999, those were done by credible Nigerians, lawyers, technocrats, and civilians. So it's okay to demand for restructuring and it's okay to demand for review of the constitution. But what is most important now is how can the Nigerian state make local government functional like local government is to be? How can Nigerian state make judicial independent? These are the issues. When we were children, local government used to do a lot of things. But like Mr. President has said, now you have a situation where a governor, an occasion will come to a local government, whether it's 500 billion or 600 billion, the governor will say to the chairman, okay, I have here my this project, that project, that project, and then he, the chairman of the local government, will 10%. And this is the greatest undoing of our system. So rather, I will ask Nigerians to focus or putting pressure on national assembly members to make sure that that autonomy as enshrined in our constitution is respected and is implemented and similarly that of the judiciary so if that were to be done some of these things, you know, like the issue of security you will find a local, local government chairman in collaboration with the areas and all the traditional rulers will have a great chain of communication where they will really understand what is going on in their locality. So these are the things that I will ask all those agitators that are calling for a structure. And I said also that majority of those calling for a structure are people that have did their service to the left, their exes ex that. They are so afraid to go into partisan politics. And even if they were to go into partisan politics, they would not win, even in their own locality. So there is no government in the world that will see their authority to people that are unelected. You are telling us that to dissolve the system and then go to a some obscure national conference to come and discuss how we move forward as a nation. That can never be done. And no government will agree to that. So even those who are calling for this thing, they should go back to their representatives, whether it's in the House of Assembly, whether it's in National Assembly, whether it's in the Senate, and lobby and say whatever amendments they want to be done to the Constitution, they follow through the process and will be like every other person. So these are some of the issues that we are facing as a nation. The other issue is those who are voting for the same conference on restructuring and conference of what they call ethnic nationality. Who are the ethnic nationalities, if I may ask? Is it only the Ijo, the Ishikiris, the Yorubas and the Igbos, the Hausas and the Plains, go to Karaba State, go to Ademawa State, go to Southern Kaduna? You will have combined among those people probably over 200 different ethnicities, languages, and tribes. Who is going to represent that? And the other question is if you talk from the, our Amir of Zazo to the Borno to people of Zazo, you will have one person that has combination of different ethnicity. In his blood there is Kanu blood. There is also Yoruba blood. There is also Fulani blood. You know, there is also Chukun blood. They are all over Nigeria. 
So we are fully, fully integrated as a people. And look at the properties that everybody has around. Some of the Igos here in Zaria, Kano, Kaduna and other places, they have more properties and businesses here than even in their own area. And similarly the same with some Yorubas. There are Akulais also that I know in Patakor that had lived in Patakor all their years. Everything about them, 90% of their resources and businesses are around Patakor and Lagos. So these people call it for whether separation or restructuring, some of them I would say they are very naive of history and sometimes they are even mischievously dangerous because Nigeria is the dominant force of West Africa. Nigeria has done a lot, not only for Nigeria but has done a lot in Sierra Leone, in Liberia and other places. So my appeal to each and every person that is here, I make sure try as much as possible to educate friends and family members. We are better as a nation. You know, our diversity is so important and we are so integrated. There is no way that you can separate us from one another. This is uh, my observation. And uh, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is uh, sending his special greetings to the organizers, to Jamiu, and to people of Zazo. I know Mr. President would have wished that Kudrat Abdullah was born in the Urano Zaima. Unfortunately, she is Zaima bred and born, and uh, she followed the tradition of a famous queen that is known all over the world when Amina Ozazo who sacrificed and did great, you know, even before the tradition of Nigeria in the 1600s. And Kudrat uh, Abdullah was also like that. Not only she was a woman of compassion, she was uh, business driven, she cares about downtrodden, and part of the narrative of success of her late husband was because of her weight and her ability to mobilize and speak to the people in the language they understand because her house was so important. Well, um, that sometimes gives criminals away. But it's not to say that people don't murder each other because once you have availability of guns, people are going to use that gun. So we hope that the National Assembly at some point will decide to suspend some of the cultural projects and say we are dedicating these funds to the building of our police system, better barracks, better accommodation, better salary, and also to increase the number of our men, you know, our armed forces, because the total number of soldiers that we have now is not more than 150,000. It's too low. Egypt with a population of about 43 million, they have over 500,000 army, air force and navy, and they have over 1 million reserves. So at any point they can fall for any eventuality. But Nigeria, we are still at the very low. So this is not something that is just happening now. This is something that has started many years ago. And I hope that the National Assembly will take this issue seriously and be able to assist Mr. President in providing better security for Nigeria. And I'm also somebody who believes that the traditional institutions, our Amis, our Hajimai, our Meangwa, our Imams, our Reverends, our Pastors, should be given a role in that huge architecture, including the local uh, government chairman and community leaders. So I believe if that is done, you know, that would be better for all of us. But we are better as the one Nigeria than divided into different tribes and uh, different uh, fragmentation. And I would also like to say that uh, 
to the young people. When I was in secondary school, at that time, for those who graduated in the 70s and the early 80s, late 70s and the early 80s, they are, that was the period of war. There were many companies that were looking for educated Nigerians to fill vacancies because at that time Nigeria was a growing economy. As you are about to graduate, the company will come and interview you, offer you a job, give you houses, give you a camera. The situation is no longer so. What our graduates and our youth used to understand, we have now reached a situation where when you graduate from a university, that degree just gives you an idea or open up your brain. So start to think of what you want to do. Certainly not seeking for employment in any government agency, whether state, local government or federal, because the vacancies are simply not there. You can start on thinking how you can become an entrepreneur. There are various programs, especially rolled out by this government. And I believe there is no government since the creation of Nigeria that is helping younger people. There is the Islam program where if you have a business plan, you uh, put it through, they will interview you, you can request for a grant between 1 to 10 million naira. And you don't have to know anybody, you go to the portal and you apply your interview. And as of now, there is also the uh, SRAN program for foreign relief, which is also a loan that is given to Nigerians without collection. You know, you are you, you send it in after some time, they will send you something, you accept or you reject at a very low interest of 5%, and you have one year grace period. Within which, uh, after that one year, you start to be in three years, 750,000, and then people can access that. So it's not fake, it's not uh, that it's not there, so young people should really aspire to do that. And about uh, the, the last thing that I will say is that the agricultural program. The unfortunate pro program of the federal government is also another program where people can have access. You have a farm, you have a uh, business plan, whether you are going to farm rice or maize or other things, you have your land, you collect your production, and that people are even getting out to a billion, a billion naira. Some are getting 500 billion, some are getting 200 billion. So these are things that are available, and there is no nation that can prosper without that nation's ability to be itself. So uh, uh, I'm glad to be here, representing the President, and I also want to commend the government of the United States for being number one in Northern Nigeria in terms of internally generated revenue. So uh, I, I say this message to the Commissioner that Kaduna is number, number two or three in Nigeria internally generated revenue. There is no nation that can grow without the citizens of that nation paying their own taxes. You want food growth, you want food payment, you want water treatment, you want good health care facilities, you will have to be able to pay your taxes. If you go and live in the U.S. and other Western countries, you will start to cry because everything and everything you do is taxable so that government can have taxes to, uh, to do programs. And I, to respond to my friend and colleague, he's always talking about Shiro from all the world. You know, I, I will tell you a story. You are... President Governor, uh, Baba one time I was somewhere out of Nigeria and he called me. And he said, Ah, who is this show? I said, Who is this show? He said, Yes. I said, There is only one show. He said, Which one? I said, 
uh, show is fast and portable. <laughs> so he busted out that, you know, he, he joked around. And there was also another story of uh, late Sakashi the Brand, who, with all his association of Sardana and uh, late Jafar Malewa, could not distinguish between men and women. When he was asked, you know, the entries that were then asked him to go and tell the Adira of Kano that it's time for him to go since he is not in good terms with the government, rather than the government to take him out, he should resign honorably. So they grant him, they grant him, they grant him. He said he can do it. So when he went to see the, the, the Amir, I don't know if it's because a Kaduru man is scared of a Pulani man. He just said to him, Anche Tasan, Omo So uh, I conclude here and uh, I thank the uh, organizers for giving us the present opportunity to come and speak. Thank you very much. Please help me put your hands together for his excellency. Thank you so much, sir. I can grant you were talking about that young man over there at uh, his excellency and our very good representative of his excellency. Thank you so much. So right now we have some awards to be presented. The uh, recitation for the outstanding members. Award. Please put your hands together. Representative of uh, Kaduna and Zoro State Governors, uh, Royal Fathers here, all other protocols duly observed. Uh, initially, when my friend Ladijani who said I'm coming to read the citation of some of the people that have an uh, outstanding performance, I was very proud that. Uh, I'm coming to display my skills. But when uh, the masters of oration here uh, made some presentations, I just have to, you know, retract because uh, I know I'm, I just have to be forgiven the language that I'm going to use. Uh, I mean, I mean the, 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 the pronunciation and everything here. Because all these people that made their presentation, I believe, have the skills, the oration, and eloquence to stand and, and, and deliver a speech in front of the United Nations General Assembly. However, I'm going to try my best. Uh, I would like to call Chief Stanley and whom I raise it to come forward as we read uh, his citation. It's going to be very, very brief. <laughs> in Medjugorje Gorgia State. Later, I to Kaduna State in 1982, and then to Zaria in December. He had his primary education in Alheri, Nazir School, Nazir Primary School in Kongozaia. Since study, proceeded to Thabo Secondary School, Thabo Comprehensive Secondary School, Zaire White obtained his uh, West African School Certificate in 1998. He then proceeded to the Federal College of Education, Zaire, where he obtained his Nigerian Certificate of Education or National Certificate of Education. In the end of time, he was promoted to study agricultural academics at the Federal University of Technology, where he got the Bachelor's degree in Agricultural Economics. In the year 2015, he found a master's degree in agriculture production economics from the prestigious Arnold Bell University. His family is something married to Jenny Romero, and they are blessed with four children. 
a successful businessman who is into office furniture and general merchandise. Chief Sally is the current chair of Ingo Pala, the local government area branch, and the public relations officer of the Ego Community Association in Zari. You are a cabinet member of Ibe in council, or Ibe council in Zaria, bearing the title for Napo Vite Uma, one, and two Ibe in Zaria, and is right. Since Charlie's young age did not stop him from moving his hands into the elders, he is a promoter of peace and social coexistence among people in Zaria. Chief Sally has lived in Congo, Sabah, and Kamwa, Kwanjina, and the Grestan, all in Zaire. This woman, an access school, a great builder, an employer of labor in Zaire, he is the Chief Executive Officer of Superb Global Council. Sir, I present you, Chief Sally, for an outstanding award peace and social assistance among the uh, people in the Zion community. Thank you, sir. Gentleman is well known for his sympathy, honesty, and patience. 
is a man of the people, regardless of their tribes and ethnic backgrounds. In his business transactions in those days, he, is always, he was always associated with people like Malam Ali and Mwaiya, Malam Haruna Kaur, Malam Abdullah Kaur, and Zayed City, who he acclimatized himself with after he became like a blood relation. Al Hajj is a bank of knowledge, master of many skills, and a, and a, and a custodian of history. He is a philanthropist that is known for assisting people with his words, his advice, skills, and whatever you come to him seeking for, in as much as he could. Al Hati treats everyone with utmost compassion. He does every act with passion and passion. Al Hati Jim Wakati of Zimkaus is well known for his cordial relationship with people in Zion. He shows concern to all during periods of trials and tribulations. Despite his old age, Al Hati always attends everybody's funeral prayers. Condolence greetings, meetings, community meetings for the progress of the entire community in Zion. He's an active promoter of peace and peaceful coexistence among people, in spite of their religious or regional background, in as much as they are in Zion community. Let me just quote some here about what here. To adjective who is an Jew. Okuri, he, Oni, Ochitoko, Omati, Foundation, and the world receiving this high award of service to the people and conflict resolution among the people who serve on the community desire.
particular thing. Unconstitution has until the court stopped over the years. But this president is different. He's a democrat. What's a good one? I heard you speak about the implementation of the government of China and also the national autonomy but the judiciary system of government as well. What more can you say? Explain more emphasis on the reiterating what you said earlier. When I what I have said is common sense. Some of us that were young in the seventies and early eighties, we knew how local governments under the military were functioning. And in nineteen uh, ninety-nine constitution, seventy-nine and the ninety-nine constitution, there was this issue of local government autonomy. They should get their respective grants straight from the park, which is federal uh, allocation, you know, that comes from the uh, revenue organization and fiscal allocation. Therefore, no governor has the right to touch that money. The elected local government chairman is representative of that particular local government. They should use the money as it is Not a particular governor to tell a local government chairman that I want 90% of that money and I will help you. that constitutional provision just like Mr. President wanted to. And the independence of the judiciary and their financial autonomy is paramount because no governor under the constitution has the right to, 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 to muscle the judiciary or to, to control their finances. They are an arm of government. Democracy, government of the people, but we have the executive, the president, duly elected, we have legislators, duly elected, and then we have institutional officers that went there by their experiences and their knowledge of law, so that wherever there is a conflict between the executive arm and the legislative arm, we look at the constitution and the laws and interpret. So therefore, their independence is paramount and is very important. And if that were to be done, some of this uh, repartious agitations for this and this and that is going to pipe down because they will find their uh, standing and they will have experience to deal with very many complicated issues that are going to arise in the course of governance in Nigeria. And I must add that the best system of government now is democracy. No Nigerian would want to go back to the era of military dictatorship where one man because he has a gun to come and dictate the people. So Nigerians must be very wary and careful of these people that are always trying to either demonstrate and burn places and even surreptitiously calling for the military to take over. That is not going to take us anywhere. And Nigerians must exist. And I urge every Nigerian intellectual, teacher, trader, street person, go and join a political party of your choice and be relevant from your world level to the local government level, to the state level and to the national so that you can become relevant in determining who gets elected and who gets voted out of office. Thank okay. you very much. Your name is on the
Okay, in the interim, what would be your call to secessionists like Sunday Ibu and uh, Namdekano? Well, I think I don't want to get personal, you know, because we are dealing with concepts, you know. Mm -hmm. By the time we talk about two people in a country with 210 million people, it doesn't make any sense. We're looking for the ideas. The ideas that can be shared by the majority of people. So we're not going to get in the picture. We're not going to talk about anybody. We're going to talk about the ideas. When we have the ideas, we have the foundation. When we have the foundation, we start building up. We're going from the grassroots. We're going up. Thank you very much.